Ah, there you are, Nilnade. I was wondering when you were going to turn up this evening. Please, please do come in. Uh, mind the mess I've made over the floor, just books and papers and the likes, and oh, and mind the gargoyle, he's sleeping. Yes, tonight I invited you into my large multi storied library rather than the small study we'd had our vampiric conversations. There are many books and tomes here that I don't think you'd have much interest in, um, such as my Gaelic version of the Book of Nod. Kind of a fascinating read, the dialect and the linguistics of it all. Oh, but you're not interested in that, I already said. I invited you here this evening not to talk on law, but to thank you. You see, since you helped me start up this YouTube channel where my teachings can reach a wider audience, we have gained 500 subscribers in the six or so months I have been doing these lessons for you, and for that, I'm eternally grateful. I had no idea that it would be so popular with today's youth, the fledglings that it were. Especially with the lack of images and videos and whatnot. That said, I think it would be rather worrying if we collected videos of kindred behaviour that would be taken down for sure. But anyway, I'm waffling. In case you have forgotten as to why I invited you here this evening, I asked you to ask your other fledgling neonate associates questions to ask me regarding the podcast, myself, the narrator, or anything else that they may well have fancied. But whether I answer them or not is a completely different matter. <laughs> In addition to the questions, I asked you Neonate to collect the telephone numbers from your associates and I've put them into this little machine here, so any moment now we will begin to receive phone calls from them. And I don't know why, but every so often it plays these really weird comical adverts from 2004 in Los Angeles if I'm going to be beside, or at least that is where I believe they were made. So if that happens, I'm, I apologise now in advance, but... I'm told that you will really enjoy these adverts, so let's just see. Ah, look, our first phone call. Ah, and it would seem that they have all used clever usernames to hide up their identities. You see, your associates are far more intelligent than I could ever dreamed for you to be a neonate. <laughs> right, we have caller at MT32249366672. Wow, that's a fucking mouthful. What is your question, sir? Or missus? What are your theories on V5 Kaito feeling the beckoning? even though they have no direct connection through Bane's blood and disciplines. Hmm, a very interesting question indeed. I hadn't considered the Kaitiff being summoned for the beckoning. But that being said, my knowledge regarding this mysterious circumstance known as the beckoning is connected to generation rather than the connection of the blood of their sires and clan. So, I suspect there are many Kaitiff who are being pulled by this mysterious force from the east. Oh, and it would seem the same Neonate has another question. Ask away. What do you think of the La Sombra's latest shift towards the Camarilla? The La Sombra have always maintained that the Beckoning slash Gehenna is a real threat and must actively fight it. Why turn to the Camarilla in the 11th hour when they are still somewhat in a sense of denial? Yes, the Keepers joining the Ivory Tower. They're sworn enemies and now they're bosom buddies with the likes of the Ventru, Toreador and Tremere. Now, there are technically two questions there that you want me to answer. Their views on Gehenna and their views of joining the Ivory Tower, so let me answer them both for you. You may be aware of the La Sombra anti-tribu. They are the La Sombra who joined the Camarilla, who do not believe the Sabbat are the right ways of fighting Gehenna. They believe that the Camarilla is the better option of fighting Gehenna, to destroy their antediluvians. And to acknowledge they don't exist may be foolish, perhaps, but that is the mindset of the La Sombra anti-tribu. But with regards to the majority of the clan joining the Camarilla, you have to understand the condition the Sabbat is in at the moment. They are wild savages, a shadow of its former self, and the La Sombra do not believe that they are worthy of ruling anymore. And if the La Sombra do not want to rule the Sabbat anymore, the Sabbat is in a really bad place, and now they believe they can take on the Camarilla, which too is a crumbling wreck of what it was before, so maybe the La Sombra can shape the Camarilla in its image. Who knows? Time will tell, perhaps. And I believe you have one more question for me, judging by the numbers and names that are flickering up on the screen in front of me. We've seen some instances of effective and ineffective efforts from anti-kindred forces, i.e. the Second Inquisition in London, the Tremere Chantry in Vienna, New York City, etc. 
Where is the likely next target and slash or we are finally seeing a true resurgence of the Inquisition with the recent wins? I hope you appreciate that as an exceptionally difficult question to ask, for I do not have any ghouls or kindred on the inside as it were, and the SI, the Second Inquisition, are rather unpredictable in that, well, we don't know what they're going to do next. There's also the matter that they are very powerful, I mean, they'd managed to locate the Tremere Chantry and destroy it. Who knows where they're going to hit next and what weapons they're going to bring with them. But if I was able to make an educated guess, I would hazard a guess Los Angeles, for it is ruled very much by the Anarchs, from my understanding, and the Anarchs are having less and less regards to the Masquerade, and with less regards to the Masquerade means an increase of Second Inquisition forces. So I imagine a lot of the US is going to be hit next. So if you find yourself in a area that's ruled by the Anarch movement, expect it to be destroyed by the Second Inquisition. Oh, I could be wrong of course, but that said, this is coming from a Nosferatu who lives in the middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Neonate with many numbers in his username. Now we go to a Josh Nahardisk, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Ask away, kindred. Ask away. For a Neonate to the world of darkness myself, what do you think are some basic misconceptions about the Sabbat? Now that is a very interesting question because no doubt your overlords in the Tremere Chantries, your regions and whatnot, have told you horror stories about the monstrous natures of the Sabbat, how they eat children and how they just have no rules in societies that hold them together. Well, I can tell you now that is not very true at all. You see, I'd argue the Sabbat has more organization than the Camarilla. The Sabbat are very ritualistic based. They have their own rules and customs and they do follow the masquerade, or at least they have some appreciation to the masquerade as such. They know that if you have a load of Famitsi, Slaxer and Voz just walk around in the middle of the high streets, that's going to cause some pretty unpleasant attention. Well, unpleasant attention in the ways that they do not want it. <laughs> The Sabbat are a force to be reckoned with. Of course, where they are now in the Middle East fighting the Gehenna War is a different matter, but I'm sure more information will come out about them at some point, what they've been up to, for I have not travelled to the East for some time, and I have yet to find out what they're up to, these modern knights. And for Tremere to ask this question, I find most interesting. Now, hmm... For the longest time, the Tremere have been blood-bonded to their elders, and they are more susceptible to being blood-bonded, yes? Am I correct? Of course I am, it was a rhetorical question. So, what do you really know about freedom, tradition, and order? Order in the form of blood slavery. Now, the Sabbat do have their own form of blood-bond, known as the Valordri, or is it the Vinculum? I can never remember which way round it is. They both begin with Vs, and they sound hmm, almost similar. Anyway, they blood-bond each other, their packs and coteries, not so much to be slaves to each other, but to show signs of loyalty. To show whether they are prepared to die for their blood brothers and sisters or not. Blood brothers in the sense they've all drunken from a cup of each other's blood. Now that may sound rather grotesque to you, but as I said, they are very ritual based and what a very useful use of the blood bond to show loyal to each other, to show whether you'll stand by your man or woman, then just say, drink my blood and do what I tell you, bitch. <laughs> so you have to question, does that really sound too monstrous to you? Well, I suppose you won't be able to answer that, given that you are a fresh neonate. A fledgling, perhaps. But anyway, that's given you some stuff to think about, I hope. In any case, I hope I've answered your question. Thank you very much, Mr. Warlock. Now we move on to a uh, La Sombra Templar. Hmm, maybe I can take back that regard, saying that all of these usernames were particularly clever. Oh, maybe this talk about the Sombra got them paying attention. And maybe I'm going to get a stern telling off of some elder. Oh, you can try, Templar. <laughs> anyway, ask away, if you dare. So, what do you think will happen to the remaining Salubri now that the Sabbat is invading the territories for the Ashir and the Refi King Havoc? Do you think the Salubri anti-tribute of the Sabbat will allow their brethren to be diabolized or destroyed? Hmm, an interesting question from a La Sombra of all kindred. What will happen to the Salubri? Diabolized or destroyed? Well, the Salubri will always survive. They are far too cunning and intelligent and peaceful to be outright destroyed by any kindred society. But diabolized well. I would imagine the Sabbat might want to eat them up if they show disloyalty to their sect. But I'd imagine, and this is only a hypothesis, this isn't anything canonical, as it were, 
The Salubri may wish to join the Anarch movement, for they would be the only ones most willing to accept them, I would have thought. I cannot see the Salubri reaching invitation from the Camarilla. They betrayed them once, after all, and Kindred never forget. In any case, thank you very much, Mr. or Mrs. Le Sombre Templar. It's a very interesting question you're all asking. Far more intelligent questions than you have ever asked, no, Nate. Shame on you, you pillock. Now, uh, where is it? We move on to, uh, what you called it? A Discord server, and you answer that on my behalf, Neonate. I still don't understand what that is. Anyway, I am waffling. Friggin Chicken recently challenged several random people to a taste test between Friggin Chicken and the other leading chicken-flavored products. Let's listen for which one they preferred. Ma'am, care to participate in a taste test? Here, try this leading brand of chicken. Ugh, oh my gosh! Is that weak old fish? Now, try this. Oh, oh! This is some good f chicken. What is this? Sir, take a test for me? Sure. Um, hmm. oh, oh. seriously, job these up your ass. Here, try this one. Hmm. Hey, hmm. Mother fing great chicken right there. What is this? It's friggin' chicken. This is cat, right? Are you feeding me cat? Try this. Holy f. f that's good. What the f is this? Sh Nine out of ten people preferred friggin' chicken over the competition. Why? Because that's some good f***ing chicken. I mean, friggin' chicken. Friggin' chicken, you'll swear it's the best you've ever had. You love the talking baby movie, and the talking pig, and even the talking car in that show. You know the one I'm talking about. But now prepare for the most hilarious, talkingest, normally mute object yet. He's Steve Cash, a New York banker and recent whittler down on his luck. And ten makes one hundred. Here's your money, ma'am. Ma'am, I happen to have a glandular problem. That's it. I'm withdrawing all my millions from this bank. Cash! <laughs> She's an ATM machine with the soul of his dead wife. There's something familiar about this ATM machine. I love you. Wow, those marketing guys are geniuses. <laughs> Together, they're learning to make the most of their special situation. So that girl from accounting used me today. Really? She wasn't like everybody else. When she pushed my buttons, she was very gentle. Oh, honey, if you don't stop, I'm going to have to make a deposit. Transferring cash. Wednesdays at 8.30 in the BMC. Say goodbye to yellow teeth and spots in your dirty dishes. It's incredible. Look at that shine. Your smile or these dinner plates. Harnessing the secrets of ancient Egypt, now there's a dishwashing detergent so powerful, it doesn't just leave your dishes spotless, it actually whitens your teeth. Patented timerly spirit toys remove caked on food and grease and remain on the plate to be absorbed into your food to clean your teeth while you eat. Dazitron, the dishwashing detergent of the future for cleaner plates and whiter teeth. Last year, Democratic candidate Michael Redmond bought a sports utility vehicle. Three months later, there were two separate incidences of hit and runs by an unidentified SUV in his area. Is Democratic candidate Michael Redmond to blame? Can you afford to take that chance? Can your children... Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate that has never committed vehicular homicide. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens has never publicly stated his opinion on child pornography. Is it because he's hiding something? Would you want a child pornographer voting on this nation's laws? Could you trust your children's future to someone like that? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, the candidate that is committed to locking up child pornographers. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens recently sued Senator Robert Thorne for accusing Rebens of being a murderous child pornographer. But Rebens had previously said he was against clogging up courts with frivolous lawsuits. Wouldn't this make him a hypocrite? Would you want a hypocrite as your next congressman? Would you want your children to become hypocrites? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate not accused of being a murderous child pornographer. In a world where people live and die. Do you think you can just go in there and handle this by yourself? If that's what it takes. He was about to meet his greatest foe. Kill them all! All of them! And a girl. Hello. Hi. And a comic relief sidekick who won't make it to Act 3. I picked the wrong month to cancel my life insurance. No, don't say that. You're gonna make it. With a guy from that other movie that was slightly popular, and what's her name, from that show you sometimes watch. In a movie with two spectacular CGI battle sequences and an advertising campaign that will leave you no choice but to see this film. See it, because it's a movie, and all your friends are going. In theaters Friday, and on DVD in three months. Let us turn there, and oh my lord, there are many, many questions from the, what, four or five same kindred here? 
Hmm. In any case, let us go through their question and see what they'd like to know of yours truly. What's your name? Good lord, there is some real urgency with that. A bit deranged too, by the way. Probably came from a Malkavian of some sort. Oh, fucking fantastic. Anywho, my name. Well, I'm surprised that it is you, child of Malkav, that asks my name, not the neonate that questions me daily. Nightly. You know what I mean. Now... My name. I have used many names in the two millennia that I have been roaming around the world, learning lore of all things kindred. Now, now, do I tell you my real name, the name I was assigned to by birth, or do I tell you my most recent of pseudonyms, uh, uh, aliases of sort? Hmm. I think for the time being I will give you a pseudonym. You may learn of my true name another time, perhaps. The name I go by in most Camarilla circles is... Malcolm Ashburn. Now that probably wasn't the answer that you're looking for, but you're asking me the questions and I'm choosing to give you the answers I wish to give you. Now, let us move on to another kindred, one who goes by the name of Knox. Out of all the clans, which is your favourite, slash which do you identify the most? Also, congratulations on the 500 subscribers. Thank you very much, Mr. or Mrs. Knox. That is oh so kind of you to acknowledge my success. It's much more than you have ever done, Neonate. Anywho, I am obviously of Clan Nosferatu. They are my favourite clan, and they will always be my favourite clan. Well, if that changes, well, this is going to date this little Q&A section, isn't it? <laughs> well, even as a mortal, I always associated myself with Clan Nosferatu. People only ever wanted to speak to me if they ever wanted something from me, and then they treated me like some horrible freak. Now, outside of that, I wonder... Well, I can tell you now I was going to be embraced into Clan Toreador, for, believe it or not, I am quite the piano virtuoso, or at least I'm rather good at playing the piano, and I have some exceptional music knowledge that you can question me on sometime, if you so please. And there are also some traits about me that would be akin to Clan Malkavian. But what sort of traits, you may ask? Well, that is a conversation to another time. Now we move on to a physicist. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Physicist? Physicist. I'm going with physicist. Ask away, Mr. or Mrs. Physicist. If you were to make your perfect idea of a clan, i.e. perfect discipline spread, perfect merits and flaws to go with it, etc., what would you make? Now that is a very interesting question, because I have never really thought about making the perfect clan before. I mean, what is perfect anyway? How would you define perfect exactly? I presume by perfect you mean broken, and by broken I can only think of a kitive with celerity, fortitude and potence. For that... <laughs> <laughs> Imagine how quickly that would ruin sessions of Vampire the Masquerade, be able to hit things super hard, practically invincible, and could fuck about all over the place all the time. Well, that is the answer you're going to get to this question. I hope it helps somehow. <laughs> anyway, now we move on to Nerdbert. What is your question? How did you come to roleplaying and World of Darkness in particular? Now that is a particularly interesting question because you would think, given my expertise on the subject, that I've been doing it for quite some time. Well, funny enough, you're actually very, very wrong. At the time of recording, it has barely been a year. No, actually, it's not even a full year since I have discovered the world of darkness. So sit back and enjoy yourselves. About a year ago, I know, I'm, hold on, I am not disagreeing with myself here. About a year ago, I purchased a video game called Vampire, made by Don't Not Entertainment Studios. And it was a game where you play as Dr. Jonathan Reed, a post-World War I doctor who's returned from the war front only to be embraced by a vampire. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole ifs and buts about the game in great detail, for you can purchase it yourself, providing you can get it to work without crashing. Anyway, I thought it was a very enticing game. The idea of vampires has always been a very interesting one for me. I purchased the game, I played it, and I got the Platinum Trophy for PlayStation 4, loving all the mechanics and the lore, and how there were different breeds of vampires that seemed to work and against each other. Um, and then I decided I was going to get the Platinum Trophy, as I just said, but whilst I was doing that, I was reading and watching countless reviews online about the game. Now, lots of reviewers were comparing it to this game called Vampire the Masquerade Bloodline, which I had never heard before. Now, it's a potato game that runs on potato PCs, as no doubt you may know, and I purchased it, and it was on sale at the time for three quid. I purchased it, downloaded it, and fell in love with its lore and settings, and began to think, hmm, this vampire game really ripped off this Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines in places. And as I said, I just fell in love with Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. And a little bit after that, 
LA by Night that was originally on Geek and Sundry began to air on YouTube, or at least it aired on Twitch and then it was put onto YouTube. And then I sat down and I watched the first episode and I was just enthralled with these people pretending to be these different breeds of vampires rolling the dice and all coming up with this like improvised theatre act with vampires and college students and I was entranced and I can remember thinking to myself, I want this, I want in, I want more. And then I purchased Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition, tried looking for games on her Facebook page, and, well, the rest they say is history. Oh, and we're back to the physicist again for another question from him or her. Go on then, ask me your question. For some of the newer members of the server, what led you to make Vampire the Masquerade lore videos, and what do you think is the best part of being able to do so? Well, this question is really a continuation of the last one, for as I was getting into Vampire the Masquerade and 5th edition and LA by Night, etc, etc, I was scanning the interwebs for all sorts of lore I could find, mostly from the gentleman gamer, Outstar and the Primogen, who hadn't been going for that long at the time, I think. My memory fails me there. Anyway, I was just getting enthralled of all this lore and I wanted to do something on the YouTubes for quite some time. And, well, I was listening to the, the Gentleman Gamer stuff and being a musician, producer fellow, I couldn't help but think that the audio quality just sucked ass through a straw with a bit of paper clogged in the middle. And I was just thinking to myself, if I was just in the room with him recording this for him, I could make this sound amazing. But of course, the quality didn't matter so much in that regard because the information that Mr. Dawkins was spewing was particularly fantastic. And I just loved the way that he was doing it in character. Like, it felt like you were having a conversation with somebody, like a lecture of sorts, similar to what you and I are doing right now. And then I decided that, you know what, maybe I could do this. Maybe I could give my own spin on the lore. And there was also the matter of fact that a lot of the lore didn't cover Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition, and I wanted to correct this. So... Around September period, I set up a load of social media pages, and on the 14th of November 2019, I recorded and uploaded the first episode of the Law by Night podcast. And I had a few written in the bag so I could just record one one week and then just continue writing. And that is basically how I got into the writing element at it. But the best part for me in all of this, in all honesty, I enjoy the recording process a lot because I get to put on this, I have to put on this silly little voice, this caricature of myself really, what you're hearing now is what I actually sound like. But then when I hear what people think of it, the comments, the feedbacks, the support, the constructive criticism, it just warms my cold dank heart. I just, hearing what people say about the podcast and hearing they love it and getting messages from people saying, oh, I've been showing my players this game, it's really been helping out with the cat creation and the games and that is just amazing to me that is a wonderful really want just it's the feedback hearing what the family has to say about it like i'm sort of tripping over my words here and i'm kind of making this up as i'm going along in case you haven't told in case you couldn't tell <laughs> i can english but it's it's the feedback and the support and the gratification that's the best part for me because part of me still thinks no one's liking what i'm doing that this is a really niche thing, and I'm making it niche -er, if that's even a word. Even more niche, I suppose, is better English. But, um, yeah, it's the gratification from it that's the best bit for me, so thank you. <clears throat> yes, there's all this stuff with other voices. What are you talking about? This is what I really sound like. The Entourage Neonade. Anyway, um, uh, another question from a uh, Nerdbot it is. Um, what, what would you like to know? Will we see slash hear you in other formats, not law slash podcast videos at some point? Actual plays, a guest at World of Darkness live streams. Did anybody approach for a collaboration yet? Now you're making me sound like right the old celebrity. <laughs> At the time of recording, no, I have not really been approached for a collaboration yet. I had one comment on a previous YouTube video talking about Vampire the Eternal Struggle, I think it is, it's one of the trading card games, but that doesn't really interest me at the moment. Besides that, I was approached by Bionite Studios, who very kindly gave me the deluxe edition of their Mind's Eye Fear to Vampire the Masquerade book, otherwise known as the Tim Bradstreet edition, you know, Tim Bradstreet being the one who did a lot of the original art. In fact, he did all the original art for Vampire the Masquerade, a famous comic book artist. Uh, the most notable example work of his I can think of outside of Vampire is The Punisher. Go and search him up, it's an interesting portfolio he has. 
but to answer your question, no, I haven't really been approached to be a guest of sorts on World of Darkness live streams or any other Vampire the Masquerade related. That being said, if anybody would like to have me partake in something like this, ask away and let's see what happens. Ah, we return to the physicist again. I'm beginning to see a bit of a pattern here, Neonade. What have you done? I asked you to order these in the correct way. Anyway, ask your question. Expanding on the previous question, would you ever DM an online game? If so, could members of the server join in? Now I've been toying with the idea of an online Vampire the Masquerade game for quite some time, I have a few ideas that bounce around my wobbly skull, but... Whether I would allow members of the Discord server to join in is a, well, it varies on a handful of things. Now, if I was doing a game for the server, then of course I would allow the server members to join in. But let's just say, hypothetically speaking, I was approached by a bigger, more official source than yours truly, saying, we want you to host a game and we're going to want you to do it with these people, then obviously no. But as I said, if I ever did a game for the member for the Discord server, then of course I would love to have you guys involved. But how I would do that, I have no idea because there are many ways that one could do it. So, I, I hope this answers your question and you don't feel deflated as I do. Don't tell me, Neonate. Who's the next person on the line? Of course, it is Nerdbot. If I put a bet on that, I would have lost all of my money. Of course, I'm joking. Anywho, it's nice to hear from you again, Nerdbot. What is your question? What is your favourite and least favourite law? If you could change something, what would it be and how would you change it? Hmm, a very interesting question. Well, as a Nosferatu, I feel somewhat inclined to remove all ties with Absimiliard and Erekel, because that is just... <coughs> <laughs> There's a lot of old World of Darkness Vampire the Masquerade stuff I would like to change. For example, uh, I believe there is a canonical Nazi Zemitzi that just makes me go yikes. I mean, of course, naturally, in inverted commas, there would be K-Knights who are Nazis and other unpleasant characters in our history, but to, to fictionise it and to, make, and to state it as a canon fiend, it just... It encourages people to say, oh, it's okay to be one of these nasty fascists, which of course it fucking well isn't. Um, how would I change it? Well, I would just get rid of it entirely. <laughs> and just leave that sort of thing to people's imagination, if they so want to, which I really hope they don't. Anyway, but what is something that's a particular favourite aspect of the law to me? Um, it's a, this is going to be a very unpopular opinion, but it's an opinion that I will stand by. I like a lot of the Ravenos law, in that they are travellers, and because a lot of people do not like them because of how they've been misportrayed as being associated with gypsy and gypsy culture, which to some extent I disagree with. In that it shouldn't have been done, but I the Ravenos are travellers, and I think a lot of it is people taking it out of context. Like the idea of them succumbing to temptation easily has often been associated with them just nicking things and being what the British would call pikeys, which is a unpleasant slang for travellers and gypsies. Um, I like a handful of the Ravenos law that they would have saved uh, Jewish people and the likes of concentration camps. Um, I find that particularly inspiring. That in a sense, a bit more heroic than other clans. As I said, it's a terribly unpopular opinion, but it is a decision I'm going to stand for. There's, I mean, there's poor examples of law and trying to integrate vampires into actual society with all of them, and Ravnos is a great big blaring light bulb that just screams we need to be rewritten. <laughs> but there you go, that is my answer, and I hope I haven't upset anybody too much with that answer. Phil's here, gotta run. Great breakfast, honey. Have a good day, dear. I'm glad you liked the muffins. Hey, what's that on the counter? That's not my margarine. That's butter. It's... Bitch! You know I'm supposed to watch my LDL levels. I, I thought it would be a nice change. You couldn't even tell. You don't want a divorce. You're trying to kill me. I'm glad I slept with your sister. I thought it was margarine grade B butter. Other well, answer taste of margarine with all the saturated fat of butter. You are on fire, Bill! I finally took your advice, and you were right. I feel more confident than ever. You the man! Isn't it great? I couldn't even believe it. We went out to dinner, and afterwards we started getting busy. I went into the bathroom to take it. I could feel it right away. Hell, you could see the title change in the toilet bowl. The visor track for an ordinary drug-enhanced direction just isn't enough. Common side effects include fainting, tingling in extremities, temporary blindness, deathly pallor. Time perception distortions, aggravated bladder syndrome, emotional incest, pronounced incontinence, delusions of grandeur, and elevated risk of stroke. Grandpa, 
Will you take me to Space Burger? Space Burger, huh? You know, when I was your age, space was mostly a mystery. We didn't know what was up there. Why, I thought there were little alien kids on Mars that might be watching me. Yeah, I used to make signs for them saying, Hello, Martians! Or, give me a ride on your rocket craft. Of course, I was young and naive thinking Martians could read English. (laughs) Everyone knew Martians communicated telepathically through space operators on their moon base. Billy, what did I tell you about talking to Grandpa? But I want to go to Space Burger. Space Burger? This looks like a job for Commander Mom. Report to the space van. Oh, boy. We can drop Grandpa off at the home on the way there. Of course, you don't see Martians on space probes. <laughs> Everyone knows Martians live in invisible domes. Space Burger, food for the space age, not old age. Last year, Democratic candidate Michael Redmond bought a sports utility vehicle. Three months later, there were two separate incidences of hit and runs by an unidentified SUV in his area. Is Democratic candidate Michael Rebens to blame? Can you afford to take that chance? Can your children? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate that has never committed vehicular homicide. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens has never publicly stated his opinion on child pornography. Is it because he's hiding something? Would you want a child pornographer voting on this nation's laws? Could you trust your children's future to someone like that? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, the candidate that is committed to locking up child pornographers. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens recently sued Senator Robert Thorne for accusing Rebens of being a murderous child pornographer. But Rebens had previously said he was against clogging up courts with frivolous lawsuits. Wouldn't this make him a hypocrite? Would you want a hypocrite as your next congressman? Would you want your children to become hypocrites? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate not accused of being a murderous child pornographer. Money troubles need cash quick. Why not try mugging someone? These are exactly the kind of questions the criminals are asking themselves right now. Did you know that the government requires you to wait 10 days for a gun? Why, in that time, a criminal could kill your family 50 times over. So how does a law-abiding citizen like yourself get a theft deterrent system in their hands in the next hour? Come to Loophole Lenny's. We've got antique military weaponry from blunderbusses to World War I grenades. Modern muggers may be stronger and faster than they used to be, but that doesn't mean they can take a slug fired by a Civil War-era pistol any better. And if you're the kind of person that can't sleep at night knowing serial rapists might be in your front yard, we've got German sniper rifles approved by the Kaiser himself that'll make picking them off one by one from the safety of your roof no problem. Buy a weapon this month and we'll throw in an ammo belt with the Constitution printed on it free of charge. Loophole Lenny's, defending your tomorrow with the weapons of yesterday, today. Ah, would you look at this? What's that? Plague of locusts descend on small Indian town. Jeez, I can't imagine what that must be like. And look at this. Civil war still raging between ethnic factions in Eastern Europe. Yeah, heard about that. And in Zimbabwe, they got to use ox carts for ambulances. That's terrible. Hey, it's a good thing we live in the U.S. It sure is, buddy. Hey, bartender, two more U.S. ales? U.S. ale. Welcome to the United States of Inebriation. And now we have a question from Helt, who is one of the mods on the Law by Night Discord server. What is your question, oh good sir? Are you interested in learning any other World of Darkness game? If so, which one is on the top of your list and why? Well, to answer that question honestly, I have two that are on the list, the top of the list at least, that change quite frequently, and they are Made to the Awakening and Werewolf the Apocalypse. Why? Well, like vampires, I have always had a mild interest in lycanthropy, those are creatures that turn in the gaze of a full moon, although in Werewolf the Apocalypse they don't just change under a full moon, I believe. My knowledge of that is rather lacking, so I like to see how World of Darkness treats werewolves. And again, with Mage, the concept of magic is one that is very interesting to me. Although, it does look rather confusing, but then again, I said that with Vampire the Masquerade when I picked up V20 for the first time. (laughs) But there you go, Werewolf and Mage. Those two are the top of my list, other than Vampire. Now we have a female questioner. Thank goodness for that. We have Neva Velo. What is your question, Midiri? If you had the chance to write for the official books, which clan or sect would you like to write about? Ooh, I love this question because it implying that people would actually come to me for official source material. Now, I naturally gravitate towards Nosferatu. I would love to put a different spin on the Nosferatu other than just mere sewer dwellers. But, as an intellectual, I would love to write about the Cappadocians, or Cappadocians depending on your preference, And I wouldn't mind having my hand on the Salubri as well, because those two clans really, really interest me. There's not a lot of information about them, and I would like to add my own twist to them. 
And whilst not a clan, I would love to write a novel about ghouls. Why? Well, ghouls are very interesting things. There's a lot of information that people don't know about them. People presume ghouls to be mortals with vampire blood, and, well, that's it. But there's a lot of mechanics to ghouls that I think could be explored beautifully in a novel. And, well, I doubt very much there would ever be a novel about ghouls. Well, if there is going to be a novel about ghouls, I would volunteer myself to write a novel about ghouls. So please, come to me if you want a Vampire in the Masquerade ghoul novel. Or novels, because I think you could write many novels about ghouls, because each clan would have a different relationship with their ghoul. Well, each individual would have a different relationship with their ghoul. As I said, lots of material to cover, and I'm just getting really excited thinking about all the ideas one could do with it. So please, if you want a Vampire the Masquerade ghoul novel or novels, please ask me. Ah, it appears we've returned to the Malkavian by the name of Peach. What is your question, dearie? Has the narrator ever embraced others before? If so, why? Would he do it again? And in an extreme case, would he embrace if he paid or made to? What year was he embraced? What were the reasons? If his sire is still alive, if so, is he on good terms with them? If not, why? Well, that's quite a lot of questions, actually, but given they're all about me, the narrator, I'm of course going to answer them all for you, but I'll be quite brief of them because I could go on in great details about all of them. Has the narrator ever embraced others before? If so, why? Yes, he embraced one woman before. It was a lover of his. Uh, the reasons being is a story for another time. Would he do it again? No. After the last embrace and how, well, what happened to this lover? He would never ever embrace again. He's made ghouls before, but it's not quite the same. Uh, and in extreme case, would he embrace if paid or made to? Mm, no. What year was he embraced? Now, I don't know about the law in terms of when the second city was around. It was before the times of Christ, at least. Jesus Christ. So, he saw the fall of the second city. Uh, what were the reasons? Well, again, Vampire the Masquerade Law, and that's going to connect him with the following question. Absimiliard, Nosferatu Antediluvian, he embraced a handful of individuals, hunters and killers, who were destined to wipe out other vampires. Now, one of these vampires was a kindred known as Yima, Y-I-M-A. You can go and search him up, he's an actual kindred. And I toyed with the idea of the narrator being a... An, a, a child of Yima. Yima doesn't have any child, according to the wiki at least. And Yima, like the narrator, are... well, is a Nosferatu scholar who wants to study kindred, think they can be useful for things. And the interesting thing with Yima, he's the only Nosferatu who is said not to have the horrible, you know, looking skin, the grotesqueness of other Nosferatu. He is to the Nosferatu what is the Holy Grail is to Catholicism. I, if you, you, it said if you drink Yima's blood, you can cure yourself with the disease of that is the Nosferatu Bane. Now, there's a lot of interesting lore possibilities of what the narrator looks like, but given the narrator has already said he's a particularly horrible-looking Nosferatu, you can make your own conclusions on that. And no, the narrator is not a canon character, he's just somebody I made up, but his sire is real. Uh, is the narrator on good terms with his sire? Absolutely. The two get on like peas in a pod, but I'm not going to say when they last saw each other, because, well, I don't know why. <laughs> Now we move over to Dio the Memester. What is your question, Dio? What other tabletop games do you play other than World of Darkness games? Now I would like you to cast your mind back to some time earlier tonight where I was talking about how I got into Vampire the Masquerade and doing lore podcasts and such. Well, Vampire the Masquerade is the only tabletop game I have any real experience with. I vaguely remember playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons once, but the only thing I can remember about it is thinking that it was incredibly dull and boring. So really, it's only within the last year that I have started playing tabletop games. Which again, may surprise you, but given the conversation I had with you earlier tonight, it might make some more sense. And who is next flashing up on the machine, Neonate? Ah, a kindred by the name of Buggy, exclamation mark, Bumblebee, Caterpillar, dot dot dot. What is your question? What mic and program do you use to record and edit? Are your interests strictly horror themed? What's your least favourite food? Ah, yes, somebody else with multiple questions in one call. Okay, what mic and program do I use? Well, uh, this is quite a list here, but I'll go through my entire setup. I have an SE Magneto microphone. It's a condenser microphone. I haven't been able to find it again, so I don't think they do it anymore. I then have that connected up through an XOR cable, and that is sent to a Scarlett 2i2 audio interface. It's the first model. That's then going into a MacBook Pro, which is recorded onto Logic Pro. Pro 10. That is my audio setup for you. 
As for my interests, horror actually takes up a small portion of my interest to be completely honest. Um, I'm a little bit squeamish, I don't like zombies, I have like a proper full on phobia of zombies. You put me in a film with zombies in it, I am not going to watch it. I'll scream before the, even the zombies come out, I just don't do zombies. And that's because of a completely horrible experience I had with Resident Evil 3. Um, I like RPGs, role playing games, uh, Japanese mainly ones, JRPGs. Um, as I said, horror is a small portion of my interest. I love music and animals. Um, but talking about horror, I suppose, I am a huge fan of Lovecraft's work, which may or may not come as a surprise to you. I have a collection of Junji Ito mangas. and Yeah, as I said, um, horror is just a small snippet of my interest. I am I'm much more cute and gutly in real life, I assure you. And as for my least favourite food, Brussels sprouts. Like, ugh. Like, snot balls of Satan. Just don't like them. I have to eat one for Christmas and that's it. Just, ugh. Swiftly moving on, we move on to Charlotte of Team Toreador. What is your question, Diva? Would you ever consider creating an audio drama of Vampire the Masquerade? Fun little fact for you, the Law by Night podcast very nearly became an audio drama. A snip of it remain in the first episode I did, Kindred 101. But other than that, I'm not sure. I mean, if I was approached to partake in one, I would be more than happy to comply. But as of creating one myself... I don't know. Probably not. It's far too much work. <laughs> ah, we have another question from Buggy. Ask away, Buggy, Bumblebee, Caterpillar, dot dot dot. Have you been taking care of yourself? Yes. Moving on, we return to the physicist for another question. What would you like to know? What's your favourite Vampire the Masquerade or D&D moment? Well, of course I'm going to have to choose Vampire the Masquerade because I can barely remember the D&D game that I played. So, my favourite Vampire the Masquerade moment would have to be during my first game where I managed to convince a werewolf through powerful use of Dominate to protect me when we were being attacked by the Sombra. Dio the Memester has a question for us again. What's your question? What kind of music do you listen to? I listen to all sorts of music, and I really do mean that rather than trying to sound like a basic bitch. Um, I have grown up with soul, disco, and funk music and jazz. That is my creme de la creme. That's my happy safe place. I also listen to lots of classical music. My favourite composers are Beethoven, Chopin, and Debussy. I love Debussy! Um, I also listen to a lot of video game music. Some of my favourite video game soundtracks are, in no particular order, Final Fantasy XIII, Skyrim, although the composer is a little bit of a rapist now, so I don't like Skyrim as much as I did anymore, and the entire Persona franchise. Does your penis always seem to be getting in the way? I got the last of the groceries, honey. I just need to close the trunk. <laughs> One more nail and this birdhouse would be as good as new. Yo! I'm sorry, sir. This dressing room is for women only. You don't have to let this happen to you. Hi, I'm Dr. Fred Tuck. Don't let your penis interfere with the quality of your life anymore. I have performed over 300 sex changes in my career, and not one of my patients has ever asked for their tackle box back. Come to Tuck Sex Exchange in the next month, and I'll give you a free estimate. Don't let your peace interfere with your peace of mind. Tuck Sex Exchange, located off Beverly Drive. Look for the sign with Toothy, the surgical saw. Tired of sluggish internet access? Mom! The internet's all slow again. I'm not your mom. I'm the creature that evolved out of your mom. Sick of unwanted spam? Oh, oh, another email message from my old college roommate, Rod Uges. Oh, oh my. Computer problems make it frustrating to log on? Error 432, network access remote server memory allocation assessment table exceeded. Hard drive reformatting will now commence. What? Looking for something that requires no logons, no unwanted email, coherent sentences, and no technical problems whatsoever? Read a book. Books. The original internet. Terrorists are prepared to destroy the largest dam in America. Again. When she bomb goes off, this Hoover will be caught with his panties down. And only this renegade cop and his ex-wife's manicurist stand between destruction and unexpected love. I'll just file you as DOA. This summer, 
All bets are off. The heat is on. The fix is in. The dogs are out. The game is up. The chips are down. The stakes are high. The odds are low. The danger is huge. The payoff is slim. Friendships will be made. Rules will be broken. Wrongs will be righted. And no unturned stone will be left. Uh, get ready to be turned inside out and upside down. Hoover 2, Hydroelectric Boogaloo, the best damn movie you'll see this year. When I'm grinding the reverse Poindexter 540 to alley northbound the contraband, I can't think about being bloated. That's why every morning I down a pound ground, a gentle extreme waxing sports drink. Because when you're pulling a wicked Skullcross 720, you don't want anything to slow you down. Now we have a Cassandra underscore BR who wishes to ask the narrator a question. What would you like to know? What do you look for in a Vampire the Masquerade game? An interesting question because, again, I do not have a lot of experience playing Vampire the Masquerade, but just a lot of experience learning and dictating the law to people. So, based on the two experiences that I've had, I suppose the one thing that I look through for is, is the storyteller an asshole? But if the storyteller is an asshole and they're just trying to make the players play the game they want to play, rather than playing the game that everyone wants to play, it's kind of a red flag to me if a storyteller tries to do things just because he's trying to destroy his players, or, as I said, he's trying to force the players down a certain path, because the first game that I played didn't offer a lot of freedom. It was mainly, you're going to do things this way, otherwise you're going to lose. And Vampire the Masquerade is not a game where you can win or lose, per se. That's what I think, anyway. There's no right or wrong answer, I guess. That's just my own opinion. A coach bear enters the fray. What question would you like to know, Mr. or Mrs. Coach Bear? What is your favourite thing about Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition? I have three answers to this question because they change place all the time. One, I like predator types for two reasons. One, because it allows players to mix and match disciplines that the kindred wouldn't usually have, like a Nosferatu with presence, for example. And the other thing is, it gets the player to think how a kindred feeds on its prey rather than just picking somebody off the street or just going to someone in a club, which I feel is the default position for a kindred to feed. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing, I'm in awe with the hunger system because it's the only Vampire the Masquerade system that encourages players to really think about the relationship with the beast. Like, a vampire who uses their disciplines acknowledges they're not human and they're tempting the beast. Yes, you could argue it's a system that punishes players for succeeding, but it's reminding players that the beast is something inside of you that wants to let loose and just feed, kill and sleep. And the third thing is the use of willpower. In previous versions of Vampire the Masquerade, willpower is something that could be used if you're in a sticky situation and you need to make a roll and you really need to win. Uh, willpower could be used to say to guarantee your success. You declare that you're going to use a willpower point, then you make your roll. And that could be the only success that you'll get, but at least you'll get a success. I don't like this idea because I'm an asshole who thinks it doesn't matter how hard you try, sometimes you may just suck. And willpower in V5 does just that. You can roll up to three dice and you may end up with a worse result. And even though that may be really annoying, I absolutely love it because it's realistic and it's grounded and it's reminding you that vampires aren't superhumans. Well, in a sense they are, but they're not going to get everything right all the time. They're, they're, they have their own limitations. They're going to suck sometimes. And that's the flawed nature of Vampire the Masquerade I adore. And V5 does those three things, predator types, hunger systems, and willpower really, really well. Dio the Meanster would like to answer another question. In case you haven't worked out, most of the questions I'm giving to you come from the Discord server because Twitter and Instagram can be assholes sometimes. I'm joking, I love you, but you could ask more questions. Anyway, back to Dio the Meanster. What is your question? How do you like your steak? Medium rare. Now, Peach would like to ask another question now. What is your question, Peach? What's the narrator's opinion on the neonates versus Ancelay and other varied generations? Does he feel connected in the modern nights, or is he still living in the past? What's the narrator's predator type? The narrator's opinion on the neonates versus Ancelay issue, well, it's an unnecessary evil. It's got to keep the little bastards in line. <laughs> Um, he's not as connected in the modern nights as, say, an Ansley would be, just because he's like 2,000 years old. He, he, he does his own legwork, and he does ask questions and find out what's going on, but as you've probably heard in a few of the podcasts, well, he's not as connected as others may well be. 
And regarding the Predator type, I have no idea because I've never made him a V5 character sheet. I have a V20 character sheet lined up for him where obviously Predator types don't exist. But as I'm thinking about it now, if I was to assign him a Predator type, I guess it would be Alley Cat. Um, but as I said, I've never really thought about it and made a sheet for him in the V5 line, so meh, take that what you will. Cassandra underscore BR returns for another question. What would you like to know, love? What's your favourite author slash novels? Well, as I hinted before, I'm a huge fan of the works of Lovecraft. I've got his entire collection just sitting by my bedside, which I pick up every so often, purely because he uses a lot of big words and it just knocks me out quite nicely before I go to sleep. I also hinted earlier on that I have the mangas of Junji Ito and if you love good Japanese visual horror with Lovecraftian influences, I recommend you go and read some of his stuff as well. Uh, my particular favourite of his is Yuzumaki and Painter from Tomie. I'm also a huge fan of Gyo which is really really creepy and disturbing, especially if you know a fair amount of Japanese history and culture. It makes it far more scary other than just the visceral horror of these weird zombie machine fish things and pus and illness and it's a really interesting novel one that's really underrated horrors aside i enjoy reading lots of biographies and autobiographies of nick drake nile rogers eric clapton if you don't know who any of those people are go and search them up there are a load of music people and i just love the tits off of them but for novels, a book I read last year called The Girl King by Mimi Yu is just fantastic. It's the first book in years I haven't been able to stop reading after I picked it up. It's such a fantastic read. I really recommend you to go and read it if you love a bit of fantasy and magic. But my favourite book of all time is My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Dahl, which I could recite to you all day, every day, and like forget to eat and sleep and drink. Go and search that up if you haven't done already. I think it's a really lovely book. Uh, we return to the physicist again. Whoopee! What's your question? If you were to travel to any country after the crisis is over, where would you go? Uh, the crisis in question for anybody who stumbles across this in the near future is of course COVID-19, the coronavirus pandemic. Um, there are two countries I've really wanted to explore for the longest time. I want to go to Paris in France because I'm a stupid romantic soul who's always wanted to see the Eiffel Tower with a loved one, but I also need a loved one in order to do that, so we're going to put that to the side for a moment. The other country is Japan simply because I'm a huge fucking weeb. Ah, Peach is calling once more, which probably means there are going to be more questions regarding the narrator. Let's see, shall we? How's the narrator's love life? How did the narrator first meet Beckett? Are the narrator and Beckett good friends? Is the narrator trying to decrease his generation? Has he ever deliberized before? If so, would he do it again? What's his opinion on Diabloing? Of course, they're all based around the narrator. Anyway, let's answer them one by one. What's his love life? He's only ever loved one, and that was the child he embraced back at the second city, and he hasn't loved anybody since. How did the narrator first meet Beckett? They met in London. Are the narrator and Beckett good friends? No, I'm pretty sure the narrator would despise Beckett. Is the narrator trying to decrease his generation? No, given the fact he's a generation four fam- No, sorry, he's a generation five vampire. He would have really no need to go any further than that. Has he ever diabolized before? If so, will he do it again? What's his opinion on diablery? Now, the narrator follows the path of Cain, which does encourage diablery on humane vampires. So, he has done it many times before. And being a 2,000-year-old vampire, he's not really in touch with his humanity anymore because it's just moved in leaps and bounds ahead of him. Oh, even more questions from Pete. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Please, please go on. What's the narrator's vampiric political alignment, Anarch, Sabat, Camarilla, etc.? His religious beliefs, if any? Would he be open to the possibility of attending a tea party if invited? The narrator is somewhat in the middle because he has to be in order to do the work that he needs to do, acquiring information and lore for other vampires of all the sects. That being said, if he was made to choose in a crisis, he leaned somewhat more towards the Camarilla. As for his religious beliefs, he follows the path of Cain, which is the path of enlightenment. I will let you research that in great detail because I could do a whole podcast episode on that alone. As regards to the tea party, he would go, but he would be highly suspicious all the same because the last tea party he went to, he was poisoned by Toreadors. That said, if you were nice enough and you wouldn't try and poison him, I'm sure he would love to drink a tea of blood. Last year, Democratic candidate Michael Redmond bought a sports utility vehicle. Three months later, there were two separate incidences of hit and runs by an unidentified SUV in his area. Is Democratic candidate Michael Redmond to blame? Can you afford to take that chance? Can your children? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate that has never committed vehicular homicide. 
Democratic candidate Michael Rebens has never publicly stated his opinion on child pornography. Is it because he's hiding something? Would you want a child pornographer voting on this nation's laws? Could you trust your children's future to someone like that? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, the candidate that is committed to locking up child pornographers. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens recently sued Senator Robert Thorne for accusing Rebens of being a murderous child pornographer. But Rebens had previously said he was against clogging up courts with frivolous lawsuits. Wouldn't this make him a hypocrite? Would you want a hypocrite as your next congressman? Would you want your children to become hypocrites? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate not accused of being a murderous child pornographer. Preparing for a business sales pitch but don't know how to sell your ideas? Try virtual meeting. So if we divert advertising away from expensive television spots and spread it around full-page ads in the leading men's magazines, we can... That's an idea, but here is what I think we should do. But I didn't finish. Yes, that's a good point, but everyone listened to my idea. But I think... That's true. However, I don't think that our target market will be willing to accept such a radical approach. Listen to what I have to say on the subject. Are you ready? Good. This is a winner. And virtual meeting doesn't just help with meetings. It can also prepare you for debating your ideas on the Internet. So, I think if the Democrats are going to have a chance at the office, they are going to have to embrace the more liberal sect of the voter bloc. Shut up. F*** hard. I majored in political science. I think I know what I'm talking about here. Laughing out loud, you are so gay. Virtual meeting, the only meeting preparation device to own. That was a good idea, which was mine originally. F*** hard. In 1984, a generation of children were introduced to a toy that became an instant classic. Twenty years later, that toy is transforming to blend into a whole new environment. Hey, Bob, right? Mind if I borrow your stapler? You want staples? Get some of these, Execucon! Nah! Take control of the noble office bots as they wage slave their secret war against the evil Execucons. Hey, I'm gonna be here pretty late. Do you mind if I get a cup of that coffee? Graphitron transform! <laughs> coffee is for closers, office bot! Collect 30 different corporate robots as they battle for workplace supremacy. Look out, Optical Mouse Prime, it's cell phoner. I've got your number, employees, and you're all getting called in this weekend. Office bots, transform and clock in. Deformers! You live. You die. And sometimes you get brought back to life. This fall. I'm afraid. I can't see too well these days. Do you think you could go to the nearest village and pick me up a loaf of bread? Bread! Good! The new horror RPG from Troika Games. Bread! Oh, I can tell you where the bakery is, stranger. But before I do, would you mind picking up my little girl from the lake? You are the monster. Ah! Or are you? If you want to enter this bakery, you'll have to defeat me. And this torch! Frankenstein, breadlust, coming soon to a PC near you. Game! Good. Right, we have one more question for the Discord server before we move on to Instagram. Right, and this comes from a D. Allen Lee, otherwise known to our Discord members as Bambi. What is your question, dearie? How did you come up with the narrator and what was your inspiration for him? The narrator came from two sources, really. Mostly, the narrator is a caricature of myself. I don't really sound like this. I sound a bit more like this. Now, you may think this is rather... Uh, posh, sophisticated, middle class, upper class, but really I just think it's rather monotonic and boring. But then I do a voice like this and I suddenly become far more interesting. And a little bit of it in a sense comes on the way the gentleman gamer would do his stuff because his characters are very sophisticated, calm, collected, middle, upper class and it's not so much I was trying to copy him but rather put a a twist on how he would do things because I never want to copy anybody because I just think that's cheating, I think it's tacky and a bit eh. So, there you have it. That is the other source that the narrator was inspired from. And why did I choose Clan Nosferatu? Well, again, Nosferatu is my favourite clan, and I've always wanted to play a Nosferatu in a game. But in more often than not, I haven't been allowed to play a Nosferatu in games because a weird storyteller 
ethos, I guess. So, the narrator is a Nosferatu in the Law by Night podcast because A, it's a caricature of myself, B, it's a slightly different take on what the Gentleman Gamer did, and C, because it's an F you to everybody who said I couldn't be a Nosferatu. So, pfft. Right, Neonate, I believe we have one more question, and you found this individual on the Instagram page for the Law by Night podcast. Yes, fantastic. Now, this individual should be calling any moment now. Ah, here he is now, Vins underscore A underscore R. What is the final question for this special Q&A section of the Law by Night podcast? What do you prefer, V20 or V5? Ah. Now, as much as I like to answer that question for you now, I'm in the process of writing a review for that. That won't be available until September of 2020, so I'm not going to spoil for that for you right now. Just hang around a little bit longer, and then you'll find out which one I prefer, V20 or V5. And there we have it, family. I have answered all of your questions that you have bestowed to me at this e- Hmm? It would seem we have one more call. A kindred who hasn't supplied a username. Neonate, who is this? You don't know? Hmm. Well, perhaps it's a Nosferat who wanted to remain anonymous. In any case, let us see what they want. F- uh, good evening, Gay Knight. Who is this? Good evening. Uh, good evening to you, Gay Knight. Who am I speaking to? <laughs> Do you ever worry that the world is going to end? Well, the last time I thought that was going to happen, Johann Sebastian Bach died. I insist you tell me at once who this is. Do you have any idea how insignificant you are? When they start devouring the world, you will be but a bloodstain on their capes. There is a red star in the night sky. The blood of mortals and the blood of ages all will be consumed. They are coming. These are the final nights. End the transmission. I said end the transmission! To be kept updated, follow the Law by Night Twitter and Instagram pages to find out when we will upload each episode. You can also find out by subscribing to the YouTube channel and clicking on the little bell, as you'll be immediately notified when the latest episode is live. Until next time, farewell.